Welcome back to Quarantine Cooking, everybody. Today we are going sexy with Greek. There's a few things we're gonna be making today. We are gonna start off with our appetizer, saganaki, that's right, flaming cheese. We're gonna do a Greek salad with a house-made salad dressing, and of course, the staple, souvlaki. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get going with our homemade tzatziki, because that's gonna take a few hours to sit in the fridge while the rest is being made. All right, so to make our tzatziki, this is what we're gonna need. Salt, pepper, dill, and Greek yogurt. With the Greek yogurt, make sure you get strained Greek yogurt. It's gonna be thicker, it's gonna come out way better. You're gonna need some garlic, lemon juice. Don't be lazy and buy that bottled shit. Get a lemon, squeeze fresh lemon juice, and cucumber. First thing we're gonna do is get the cucumber ready. We're gonna peel the cucumber, and then we're gonna grate it up. Oh, come on, if you're telling me you've ever made cucumber nipples, you're a liar. So the first thing we're gonna do, we got our cucumber peeled. We're gonna grate the cucumber. The seeds inside are fine. You just don't wanna have any of the skin. So get rid of all the skin and then just use the big side of your cheese grater and grate the whole cucumber down. Okay, cucumber's grated. Now we're gonna take all that, put it in a bowl. And we're gonna add a little salt. The salt is not just for seasoning. The salt is actually going to help draw all that water out of the cucumber. So sprinkle some salt all in there. Don't make it too much because you don't want our tzatziki to be overly salty at the end. But get a decent amount of salt in there. Again, this is all to taste, right? So if it's too salty, it's your fault. All right, so as that cucumber has been sitting there, I went ahead and minced two cloves of garlic. Make sure you do the garlic as fine as you can. You don't want any big garlic chunks in your tzatziki. Some people would say two cloves is too much, but fuck you, I like garlic. Same with the dill. I uh, chopped a lot of dill. I really like dill. If you don't want that much dill, don't put so much dill. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our Greek yogurt. We're gonna put a bunch in the bowl. See how nice and thick this is? Look at that beautiful, thick Greek yogurt. Get a lot of that in the bowl, okay. Now we're gonna put in our garlic and a dill. Now we're gonna hit it with some lemon juice. Squeeze that in there. Some salt. Don't go too heavy on the salt because remember we already salted the cucumber. Pepper. Now let's give that a nice mix up in there. All right, now we're gonna deal with our cucumber. You see how much water came out of that? So we're gonna squeeze all that water out of that cucumber. All right, so I drained all that water out of the cucumber. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a clean cloth. You can use paper towel, but I would recommend cloth over paper towel because obviously this is not going to tear or your paper towel will, especially if you're buying the cheap value brand shit because everybody in quarantine thought that they needed to load up on all the paper towels in the world, so now there's none for anybody else. So you can use a cloth. What we're gonna do, we're gonna just put that right onto the cloth. We're gonna wrap this up and we're gonna squeeze all the water out into the sink. So we're just gonna squeeze all this water out, really give it a nice good squeeze. See how much water's coming out of there. If you don't do this step, your tzatziki is gonna be watery and it's gonna be garbage. So make sure you get all that water out of this cucumber. Give it a nice twist. Now we're gonna take this cucumber, throw it right back in. And we're gonna give that a nice mix up here. Now 
Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna cover it up with some uh, saran wrap, plastic wrap. We're gonna sit that in the fridge. It's gotta sit for at least a couple hours. You wanna let that flavor from the garlic and from the dill all to seep out into the yogurt. If you taste it right now, it's gonna be kind of plain whatever. Once that sits for a while, those flavors are really gonna bloom and it's gonna become that delicious tzatziki that everybody knows and loves. All right, so our tzatziki's in the fridge chilling out. We are going to now get our meat marinating for the souvlaki. Greek souvlaki seasonings, marinades are very, very simple. All that goes in it is lemon juice, oregano, olive oil, salt and pepper, that's it. So what we're gonna do, I have here, I have a chicken breast and a pork loin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop these up into bite-sized pieces and throw them in the bowl and then we'll get the marinade going. All right, so my chicken and my pork is chopped up. I'll put them both in the same bowl. I'm only cooking for myself, so I don't really care if it touches. But if you want to cry about it, then do it in two different bowls. I don't care. We're going to first hit it with our olive oil. Put a nice amount of olive oil in there. Then we're going to put our lemon juice. Remember, whenever you're doing meat marinades, you always want something acidic, whether it's a type of vinegar or a, or a citrus fruit, whatever. The acidity really helps not just flavor the meat, but also breaks down the proteins and tenderizes it while it sits in the marinade. Then we're going to take oregano. I like a lot of oregano. You can't really ruin it if you put too much, so don't worry about that. And we're gonna get some fresh ground pepper in there. Again, to taste however much you like. And we're gonna do salt as well. Put as much salt in there as you like. Now just get your hands in there. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Mix all this up. Get everything nice and coated. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna put it in the fridge and let it sit for an hour at least. So now that our meat is in the fridge marinating, we are gonna start working up on the salad. For the salad, we are going to use some cherry tomatoes, red orange, bell peppers, whatever color of peppers you want. We got red onion, we got some feta cheese, got some black olives. Olives are optional. If you don't like olives, don't put olives. And cucumber. All right, so we have all the veggies chopped up for the salad. Everything's in there except for the feta cheese. That we're gonna leave on the side until we serve it. The dressing is going to be almost exactly the same thing as we use for the marinade, except for instead of lemon juice, we're going to use white vinegar. So we got salt, pepper, olive oil, oregano, white vinegar. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to pepper, salt, oregano, olive oil. And just a splash of white vinegar. Does tossing salad also count as Greek? So we're gonna stir this all up. As with everything else in this recipe, it's gonna taste better after it's been sitting for a while. So this is gonna go in the fridge. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do our grilling. All right, so our meat has been marinating in the fridge for about an hour and a half. I went ahead and put them up on the skewers. I got my chicken on the one and all my pork on the other skewer. The barbecue's hot, so we're just gonna take these outside and we're gonna head to the grill. So remember, do not, do not cook the shit out of the meat. Chicken and pork are not supposed to be dry. People always overcook it. They're so afraid of getting sick in the salmonella. Don't ruin it. Keep it nice and juicy. Do not overcook it. Make sure you keep on rolling them, not to burn it. And uh, if it starts flaring up, just try and keep those flares down. All right, so this block is done. We're gonna take that off the grill. We're gonna head back inside and we're gonna get going on our saganaki. All right, so we got everything done. Uh, all that's left is our appetizer, the saganaki or flaming cheese. So the kind of cheese I'm gonna be using is called kaseri. So this is the cheese I'm using today. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of Greek cheeses you can use. Saganaki is not the type of the cheese, it's the name of the dish. So for us today, we're using Kasseri, but you can use whichever kind of Greek cheese that you can get your hands on. 
So traditionally, if you actually go to Greece and you get Saganaki in Greece, they do not let it on fire. That's actually an American thing. Um, in the 60s, there was a restaurant in Chicago called the Parthenon. They were the first ones to actually set the cheese on fire and they go, Oppa! No one ever did that before in Greece. That is a completely American thing. But uh, who doesn't like lighting shit on fire? So let's do it the American way. Okay, so we've got hot oil. We're going to take our cheese, put it into the hot water. What this is going to do is it's going to make the flour stick much better to the cheese. We're going to get a nice coating of flour all over this cheese. And we're going to drop that right into the olive oil. Now the goal here is to get a nice golden brown color on both sides. All right, now we're going to take our cheese, it's been about a minute and a half. We're going to give it a quick flip. And then we're going to wait about another minute and a half. So we want a nice golden brown color on it. All right, so we're ready to go. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna take some brandy and pour the brandy over the top and whoopa! Then you're gonna take a lemon, squeeze the lemon on top, put it out with the lemon. And there you have it. So we got everything plated here. You see the Saganaki Beautiful and stringy. You see how it's nice and melted that is? Gorgeous. That's what we want. So there you have it guys. That's how you make a sexy souvlaki, sexy homemade tzatziki, sexy Greek salad with homemade dressing, and a sexy flaming saganaki. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and share. Try this one. You're going to love it. Stay fat, everyone.